beautiful speckled trout at the Bing Retreat. And nothing but beauties on a fly rod. Come here. Stay tuned for action this week on The Weekend Fisherman. Weekend Fisherman is brought to you by the Hart Brewing Company, Brewers of Valley Gold, Pioneer Petroleum, the Spirit of Service, Berkeley, Trilene Super Strong Fishing Lines, and Honda Marine, Power in Tune with Nature. On today's show, I'm the guest of Chris Fisher, owner of the Bing Retreat. This peaceful year-round retreat is conveniently located one hour west of Canada's capital in the Land O'Lakes district. The 200-acre resort offers complete privacy as it surrounds the speckled trout-filled Horseshoe Lake. The beauty of the area is in full view from the large porch that overlooks the lake. The lake is teeming with the ever-popular speckled trout and there is no shortage of action on this lake. The speckled trout provides great action as well as incredible beauty. These fish are also known as the brook trout. As table fare, they are excellent. The taste is multiplied by one of the best shore lunches that you could ever have. At the Bing Retreat, a catch and release formula is in place in order to sustain future fishing. The sparkling spring-fed horseshoe lake offers year-round peaceful enjoyment for those who appreciate nature's beauty, the 50-foot granite cliffs, tall pines, and its clear, clean water will ensure your visit to be a memorable one. And the fishing? Well folks, this is a bonus, with speckles in the 1-3 to three pound range and 5 plus pounders can be expected. For anyone wishing to rough it, a beautiful private tent site beside a babbling brook is available for your enjoyment. The use of canoes, rowboats and other non-motorized means to travel a lake are promoted. This provides the best possible environment for the fish and wildlife in the area. Handmade cedar strip canoes unspoiled shorelines, speckled trout, and great hospitality are the Bing Retreat. Oh, I had that little one there earlier on my fly rod, but they've been a little tougher to catch as the morning has progressed. So now we're using MEP spinners, small MEP spinners, and I have a nice one here. Wow, this is a nice Bing Retreat speckled trout. Check this out. Oh! Well, as you know, this is my special technique for live release. Let you see it for about five seconds. <laughs> oh, the fun of fishing. They've been hitting good for everybody else but me this morning, but finally I got another one here as we were trolling back for our shore lunch. I think we have enough for shore lunch, don't we guys? <laughs> this one here was caught on a black Meps Fury. Really nice. This is a big old trout, and with it comes the challenge of successfully landing it. Maybe with a little cooperation from the fish, we can succeed. <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to show you this if I don't lose it. Hang on, everybody at home. Hang on at home, everybody. My God. I don't want to lose it. Oh, come here. On the weekend, fisherman, boy. Check that out. Holy cow. All right. You know, there's one thing to consider when you're fishing in these canoes, and that's safety, because they can be a little tippy. This is a gorgeous canoe, and it's very safe, and I feel safe in it, but when you get excited, when you catch these nice rainbows or speckles or any other fish out of a canoe. Bye-bye. <laughs> Another live release one. <laughs> hey, there's going to be a lot of fish left for you when you come up here, that's for sure, because I've lost my share today. Back to the drawing board. Folks, the art of paddling is hard enough with two hands, let alone one. Fighting the fish with the other while maintaining my balance on an 8-inch seat is quite tricky. What we're doing right here is this whole lake has a, you, it's really hard to believe, it's, it's over 90 feet deep in some places, but what we've been doing is just around this general area right here, there's about a 15 to 20 foot hole and then it drops off into 70 feet of water and it seems at this time of the night that most of these fish are making their way slow but sure up to the, uh, up to the feeding areas. And I noticed that there's been a lot of minnows as I was <coughs> going around. And as I seen the minnows start to come up into this 10 feet of water, I started to troll my spinner or my fly in that general area. And sure enough, they were starting to hang out there. And it is starting to be a little late in the day. It's about 5.30. So they're starting to, there you are. I don't want to keep it out too long. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the spinning outfit that I'm using. I'm, uh, I like short fishing rods. I don't know why, I find more control. I use a lot of 6.6s, six but this one here is a 5.6 gold wing from Fenwick and it's a really really nice fishing rod to use when you're fishing for these and it's just a, a medium action. Uh, this has been the, the killer today, all these MEP spinners, these small little MEP spinners and uh, again very similar to how we've been fishing the fly, we would just troll these behind the canoe and um, this is a heavier style bait and it seems to be going you know maybe 15 feet below the surface and that's where we are catching them uh, earlier on in the day but as you can see we're getting into the into the evening we're not done yet but this is probably the most productive time for speckles so let's get the boat turned around again and try to get another one if fly fishing is your game the Bing retreat offers plenty of space to ply your trade with over two miles of shoreline and fantastic fish habitat Right, on the fly rod. Let's see what we have here. I'll tell you, I like catching them on my spinning rod, but I have to tell you that I really like catching them on a fly rod. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. As I was saying, I was using that type of fly, a woolly bugger. Oh my god, just I just barely have him hooked. I just barely have him hooked. There you go. This is a native trout of Horseshoe Lake. Well, you know, you're probably wondering how I can be so successful with all this action and what I'm using and, and it's really actually quite simple. You know, I'm not the greatest fly fisher around but I've learned a couple things that are really important like uh, to make sure that I match the line and the rod and the reel all together. This is a six weight rod about nine and a half feet 
um, Fenwick reel, and I'm just floating a little woolly bugger about uh, you know about an inch and a half. And right on the very end of it, what's quite unique because these fish are actually subsurface, we did see a couple bouncing around and and taking some flies off the top, but most of them are subsurface. It has a little bead in the head so that it goes just below the surface. And I have obviously I have a floating line, but a sinking tippet. So what actually happens is as you go and let the line out, the back end sinks down just, you know, maybe 10 inches underneath. And I'm doing something a little different. Um, instead of casting it back and forth, since it's a small lake, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to have a motor because there is none allowed. I just paddle my boat around, just do circles, circles. And that's how we've been catching them today and it's been pretty successful. But one of the really important things is have a really well matched rod and reel. And fly fishing is for anybody. It's time for our tip of the week, brought to you by Fishing Buddies. Many people ask me what fishing is all about. First, it's not about only fishing. A shore lunch that is prepared with fine ingredients, the skill of a fine host, the hospitality of your friends, the smell of fresh cooked food over an outdoor fire. The anticipation of a great meal ahead is to say that you have fished. I'm with Chris Fisher after a fantastic lunch. Chris, you did a great job of the Bing Retreat. You know, this is an incredible place. When I heard about fishing an hour and a half from Ottawa, the nation's capital, that could possess such beautiful speckled trout, I couldn't believe it, but this place is incredible. How'd you get started in this? Well, it's... Uh it's just basically we, we bought the lake and uh, it seemed like a natural spot. There, there were uh, a stock of uh, natural speckled trout in there and we just supplemented it with stocking. And uh, it seems like a great place and a good business uh, to get started in. And uh, uh, I, I think it's really sort of um, missing in Ontario right now. There's a gap to be filled because the, uh, the government uh, stocking programs have been cut back. and. Uh, in comes the private guy, and uh, there's great fishing here, uh, good-sized fish, and... Uh, and not too far, like we were saying. That's right. One of the nicer things about it, though, is, is not just the fact that it's a, it's a, a nice-style lake, it's a horseshoe-style lake, and as the name is, it's a horseshoe lake, and it looks like a horseshoe lake, too, the way it goes around yeah. the, the, the peninsula. But what's, what's more impressive about this place uh, than even the water and so on is the cabin and the place that you can rent... Uh, out. It's, yeah. it's class 1A without a doubt. Yeah, we have uh, we have rental accommodations. Uh, it's a five bedroom luxury uh, uh, cottage and we're planning on building more in the future. Uh, probably three or four more. So, Wow. Uh, so, And it's really it's really inexpensive. Uh, we'll leave a number a little later on at the end of the show and people can certainly mm -hmm. call you up to get information about it. But it is, when you think about being so close from Ottawa, um, yeah. you can't ask for better fishing. That's nicer place to stay. And the hospitality is fantastic. Yep. The, the uh, accessibility, you can drive right in. You don't have to go in a bush road with your $30,000 GMC and smash it up uh, going through the mud. You can drive right in and put your boat in. Yeah, yeah, but it is, but it is uh, secluded from the yep. main roads. Where Definitely. we are, is, uh, there's no hydro wire sounds. There's no, no cars beeping. It's, uh, it's really unique, and uh, we and appreciate uh, you having us here today. Okay, thank Let's you. Let's get back to the fishing. So tonight's going to be good? Very good. All Hopefully right. the big ones anyway. All right. <laughs> The Bing Retreat's Horseshoe Lake is shaped exactly as its name implies. The Small Flats and Pronghorn Point are just a few of the areas that hold fish. The Big Dock Ridge separates the shallow north side of the lake from the deeper 70 plus foot depths of the south side. The beautiful landscape grounds and sandy beach invite you to cool off in the crystal clear waters. If rental accommodations is required, the Bing Retreat offers a luxury five-bedroom lakeshore cottage fully equipped with walk-in shower, whirlpool, TV, stereo, and CD player. After a day's outing, curl up beside the massive Fieldstone fireplace. The Bing welcomes large and small groups of anglers or those who are looking for rest and relaxation. Fly fishing, spin casting or ice fishing are available for your enjoyment. 
At this place, there is always plenty of fun and action for all who wish it. Oh wow, it's fantastic on the fly rod. You know, it's kind of tricky, eh, to... Uh, <laughs> when the wind catches us here. Anyway, this looks like this is going to be the last fish of the day for the Horseshoe Lake at the Bing Retreat. I'd like to thank all the people that helped us out here today. The guys who lent us this gorgeous canoe. Also, my buddy Chris. If you ever want to come up and enjoy a real nice day of fishing, he's the guy to give a call to. Well, here the fish comes. Oh.